Hi, welcome back to Make Stuff Nation. Welcome to part two of building a plywood snipe. Today I'm going to be starting to build the frames for the boat. Let me show you what I've worked on since I last recorded. Victor and Alan are supervising filming this morning. Last time we completed by drawing in the mast step location as well as the dagger board case. I emailed the Snipe Class International Racing Association because on the measurement data sheet they, they list the height of the dagger board case but they didn't specify whether that was measured from the baseline or from the keel. They replied and told me that the measurement listed is the actual height of the centerboard case. So because I measured from the baseline, the height of the case will actually be slightly taller in the finished boat. And I'll adjust that on the layout. Additionally, I started to draw in the actual framework for the boat. All the measurements I drew out in the last video were to the outside of the hull. So to draw the layout for the frames, what I've done is I've offset inboard 10 millimeters, which is the thickness of the plywood that's gonna cover the outside, and then drawn in the orange lines of the framing. I've also drawn in the keel batten at each station, the chine plank, and the shear clamp. So now I can take dimensions off of those and start to make the frames. Because the boat is going to be built upside down, I've also drawn in a reference line. I can cut all the frames to length to that reference line, and that reference line will be established on the jig, and that way the boat will be much easier to set up. I also projected out the transom so I can start to construct the frame for that. Because the transom on the boat is raked, you can't just use the profile or plan view or cross section to get an area for the transom. You have to project the widths out from the actual raked transom and then you can connect the points to get an actual surface area of the transom. Just like the station frames, I've offset in 10 millimeters from the outside of the transom and drawn the transom frame edging and put in the shear clamp, chine plank, and keel batten. Another task I had to complete to lay out the framework was making patterns for the athwart ship curvature of the deck for the fore and aft decks. To make these patterns, I cut a board that is the width of the boat at the station where the deck is the widest. From there, I drew a baseline along that board and then marked out the center. At the center, I drew a perpendicular and that represents the center line of the boat. The next step, I measured on that perpendicular the height of the deck at that station and then marked points on the baseline at the shear line at that station. From there, I stretched a batten between those three points and traced it. That represents the top side of the deck. From there, I offset down 10 millimeters and did the same thing with the batten to draw the top of the frames of the deck. I then cut the batten apart sanded and smoothed out the edges down to the line. You can then use the inside pattern to draw the tops of your frames and the outside pattern to check the top of the deck worked. All of the frames and gussets on this boat are made out of three quarter inch by two and a quarter inch lumber. I'm gonna be using Cypress for my construction. There's a local sawmill that was able to provide me with some very nice dry, well-seasoned straight Cypress. Unfortunately, it's all rough sawn to one inch by varying widths. So to mill it down, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut all my pieces to approximate length, then I'll plane it to three quarter inch thickness, joint one edge, and then rip them to the two and a quarter inch width. Once I have all the rough stock milled, I can cut the appropriate joinery to make the frames. The final cut list for the frames is going to be 12 pieces that are approximately 28 inches long. I will have some waste on the shorter bottom sections when I cut them to length. 10 34 inch pieces for the top side station frames and two pieces that are 38 inches long for the transom. Alan, get up. It's time to go to the shop. Get up. Quit being lazy. You're my safety advisor.
here's all the lumber for the frames milled to its final dimensions two and a quarter inch by three quarters of an inch we have 12 pieces for the bottoms of the frames 10 pieces for the sides of stations one through five and then two pieces for the sides of the transom with the frame material cut to dimensions, I can use it to finish a couple things on the layout for making the frames. Using a piece of the frame material, I can draw in the rest of the frames and then the gussets that will be used. The transom, which is this layout, doesn't need a gusset because the frame pieces are attached directly to the transom board. Come on, Victor, move out of here. To complete the frame for this station, I'm just gonna line up the board on the outside line and then trace the other edge to get the width. This will allow me to copy down the angles that they intersect to cut the joinery. Now with the frames drawn in at full width, I'll be able to copy this angle to cut this. I can also cut the angle where the frame meets the keel and then I've already drawn in the gussets. Well, these gussets are actually floor timbers, and these are just the corner gussets. How I did that, I just laid a piece of frame board in at an appropriate angle, drew a line to the inside of the corner, and then used my compass set to the width of the board to strike an arc to smooth out the ends. The benefit of drawing these frames out full scale in their entirety is it allows you to bring the completed frames in and check them to the pattern to make sure they're correct. And it also allows you to find any errors in your design. I noticed that my shear clamp, I lined it up too high and that most of it was gonna have to be planed off to make room for the deck planking on top. So I moved the shear clamp down by the equivalent of the deck width and that'll allow me to use the full cross-sectional area and keep that extra strength. I'm not gonna highlight everything because this drawing is starting to get a little busy. I've brought in all the milled lumber for the frames and laid it out by the patterns corresponding with the positions that they'll be cut for. Now it's time to transfer the layout work onto the boards. I'm gonna use the tried and true method of using nails placed on the pattern, setting the frame board on top, and then hitting it with a hammer to transfer the lines. Then I'll connect those impressions with a pencil. I have all the joinery for the bottom and side frames marked out. You can see I've marked the cutoffs. I spent the last hour or two measuring and calculating the bevels for the frames. I wasn't very happy with the results I was getting and wasn't sure of the accuracy. So what I've decided to do is just install the frames with the square edges and then use a batten to fare the bevels in with a hand plane once I have them installed on the jig.
I have frames one through five as well as the transom frame all ready for glue up. I roughed them out on the bandsaw and then took them over to the power sander to flatten the ends and to clean them up as close to the line as I could. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get into some of the corners with my big power sander, but I was able to finish most of them on the strip sander. Last of all, the notch for the shear clamp, I wasn't able to get into with the sander for all of it, so I went in with a chisel and cleaned it up. I also made a template piece the same dimensions as the shear clamp to test fit to make sure I didn't overshoot or undershoot the size of the notch. This morning I cut all the gussets and floor timbers for each frame. I then brought them all into the house to compare against the pattern. I've gone ahead and laid out each frame in its entirety one at a time on the pattern. I'm checking all my angles, the shear clamp and chine clamp notches, and all the gussets and floors to make sure everything lines up properly. I've also transferred the reference lines to the top sides of the frames that will assist in mounting them on the jig. Now I can take them back to the shop and assemble them. I've completed assembly of all five of the frames. Here's frames one, two, and three, frame number four, and frame number five. I assemble them by applying epoxy to all the joints and then tacking the gussets and floor timbers in place with a brad nailer. The brads are not structural to this boat. Their main purpose is just to help hold the frames in place during the assembly. I used a slow hardening five to one epoxy to give myself time during the assembly. I also used a silica thickener to help thicken the epoxy to make it work better as a glue. Once I've let the frames cure overnight, I can take them inside and again compare them to the pattern to make sure everything is in place. There will be a little cleanup of the frames because my epoxy job was a little messy, but other than that, I think they turned out really well. Here we are a couple of days later. The epoxy is cured very well, it's nice and hard, and the frames seem to be very strong. I've brought all five of them in the house to check them against the pattern. So far, everything seems to be well within the tolerances and right in line with my design. The last thing I need to do to prep these frames before I put them on the jig will just be to take a hand block plane and smooth out the edges where I have some epoxy that's spilled over. This is where I'm gonna conclude part two of building a plywood snipe. In our next video, we're gonna move on to making the stem and the transom and maybe setting up the jig. I hope you found this video entertaining and useful. Thanks again for watching Make Stuff Nation and please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you next time.